uh, was the ripple effect or the theory of change. Um, at the center is parent leadership initiative building capacity. So it's like a stone being thrown and it ripples out. So as parents start to use their voice and realize that they really do matter and that one person can make a difference, their sense of uh, commitment grows, their dedication to taking action in their community deepens. One of our parent ambassadors after she told the story said, and I quoted her, I felt empowered to myself. Sharing your truth can be empowering and make you feel connected and it's healing. This leads into the second ripple where parents undergo personal transformation. So we realize what works with parents. It's meeting them where they're at. When, when parents feel heard and valued, they discover their own worth. So it's really important to meet them where, wherever they're at. Um, if they're just starting their journey, you meet them there. If they've been at tables for a while, you help them meet there and, and find new tables. Um, they start to feel motivated and feel a sense of power to be able to make change. And as parents really start using their voice, they start to develop the confidence, the self-love, resilience, social connections, and a lot of times they, they find that support from the other parents, especially in, in times of need around the COVID crisis that was going on, they find support with other parents. And they really realize that the vision and belief that change really is possible. And as parents get more confident, it leads into the third uh, ripple where parents take collective action to address inequities. So one of our parent ambassadors said, I deserve more and so do my children. And realizing their voices really do matter, our parents are advocating at PTAs, PTOs, school boards, they're writing letters to editors, they're uh, building relationships with their legislators, providing testimonies, and working their way in decision-making tables, which leads into the fourth ripple of parents become valued advisors to the public officials. So really, as parents start to become confident and are seen as role models in their families and communities, their children and families start seeing them with new respect and are inspired to take action themselves. They create a more positive sense of possibility for themselves and their communities. And as parents really start to build the relationships with their lawmakers, many legislators are coming up to them and asking them, you know, what is this no vote gonna mean? Or what is this yes vote gonna mean? I, I remember one of our parent ambassadors who had a very strong um, legislate, legislator and um, she was a Hispanic person and she gathered a group of Hispanic parents and went and met with him and talked about really what, what, what a no vote would mean on this issue or what a, no, a yes vote would mean. And as she started to build that relationship, he would call her and say, this vote is coming up. If I vote yes, what is that gonna mean for the Hispanic community? And she really became a partner with that legislature. And I just remember like, she's like, I didn't think that my voice mattered that much. I didn't think that I could really make change in my community. And again, she started to be seen as a role model and, and her community started coming to her and saying, you know, I have this issue, can you help me? What, what do I do about what's going on with, with this one? Which leads into the last one of parent leaders invigorating democracy. So in Washington state, you know, we've known parents, um, their expertise and their voice should be in city, state and federal legislation. And it's what really needed to move the needle for early learning and programs that affect not only low-income children and families, but all families, all families. You know, we're realizing that parent voice is important. Our parents like Byron and Catherine and Maricela, they've really been instrumental in leading the fight. And recently Byron realized um, his lived experience is just as important as a professional at the same table. And this led to the creation and passage of the lived experience bill in session this year. So we brought parents into focus groups and talked about, you know, what would this bill look like for you? And we realized that by getting parents at the tables where the bills were being drafted, we had a great chance to make historical changes 
as parents were fighting for policies that increase equitable access. So kind of in a nutshell, the lived experience bill allows parents sharing their lived experience at tables. Uh, we're planning and decision making, the, pro the decision making processes are being made to be compensated for their experience, just like an expert at the table sharing their expertise. So it was a huge win for Washington State parents and the state itself. Um, we're just really starting to see uh, a lot of measurable victories and robust sustained investments when, when our parents are really actually starting to sit at the tables and make decisions that are about our, our families. Um, parent Ambassadors has known from the beginning that parent engagement and parent input are crucial and should be required at all tables where policies are being planned, implemented, and carried out. You know, parents need to be working with allies and partners and policymakers from the very, very start. And this really helps shape good policy and it really adds to a good shot at a successful bill. Um, next slide. Before I wrap it up, I just want to acknowledge through um, the Parent Leadership Indicators Project around the importance of having parent engagement at tables. And Parent Ambassadors was fortunate enough, and we are so thankful to be able to contribute as much information as we did to the research. We're, we're very thankful. So there was a lot of information um, in that evaluation. If you want some more information about it, just let us know.